All right, welcome back to Vela News TV in another installment of the Chris Horner Diaries. Here we are at the start of stage six. It's a uh, first day of real sunshine and warmth, and uh, I guess yesterday was the first day of real drama of the tour. Yeah, there was a bunch of drama yesterday, wasn't there? I mean, you had Vinokurov going down and losing a minute and 20. Claude, who's possibly starting or not starting. I haven't heard the official uh, statistics on that, if he's going to do it or not. So we, we were just over there. They said he's going to take the start. He's going to take the start. I thought he probably would, too. Everyone was saying he wasn't, but I was not. Who leaves the tour unless you actually can't get on the bike? And if you can finish a stage like yesterday, most likely you probably can continue. So that would have changed things even more. But with... with uh, Vinokurov, with Vinokurov gone now, that's, or not gone, but 120 down, he's going to have to go on the attack if he wants to win, or he's going to have to be willing to settle for Cloden going for the win in the Tour de France, and so that's that's the real drama. Cloden always was one of my favorites for the win, but being on a, the team with Vinokurov and it's his team, then you feel like there's going to be some drama there. Now it even adds a little more tension to it. Tell us a little bit about the, the course yesterday because, you know, as journalists in the press room, we're wondering why is everybody crashing? I mean, I heard Life Hosta went down yesterday. Yep. I mean, there was scores of crashes out on the road. Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, the crashes were pretty much everywhere. It's small roads all day long, rough roads, really hard on the hands. I don't wear gloves at all, and the bumps on the bumps from the roads were actually starting to, to so much friction on the hands was starting to cause a lot of problems with my hands. They're just because of so much extra stress in the tour. You're holding on harder, you're braking more, and you got rougher roads. The rougher roads also create more dirt, more gravel on the side of the roads, and I think that's what was causing most of the problems. As you get to the outside, you're trying to pass on the outside on a curve. You got some gravel there. The tires are washing out, and that seemed to be most of the problem through the throughout the day. Is what I saw yesterday it was just people were on the outside, and that those were the guys crashing, not the people in the middle. But it, the roads were tight, and technical, and lefts, rights all over the place. Beautiful course, without a doubt, but it's a Tour de France, and so there's a lot of extra stress involved. Well, we're glad to see uh, no bandages on you. <laughs> uh, tell me a little bit about where you were and what your uh, sort of perspective was on when Vinokurov crashed, because we saw leaky gas and CSC at the front. We didn't know when the word came through the peloton, but it, and there was a lot of discussion as to whether the pace picked up, whether it stayed the same. Absolutely not. Pace never changed. It was full gas when he crashed, and that's why he crashed. Everyone was fighting to be there. We were 25K or something like that from the finish. You had two guys in the break that are extremely, extremely good riders that can hold off a field if you're not going 100%. If they would have backed off, they would have lost a yellow jersey for sure. There's no doubt in my mind. I never felt an acceleration because of that reason anyways. And even on the climb, there was more than enough good quality riders that hadn't been on the front that could have been on the front and we could have gone up that climb much faster absolutely undeniable fact is all you have to do is look at the results 70 people finished together in the front after going over the climb if the real climbers wanted to make it difficult we would have finished with 30 of us no one accelerated for vino it was just bike racing that took him off the back and and cost him 100 or i'm sorry a minute and 20. when a, when a when a top rider goes down like that how quickly does or i don't know if you even know how quickly does the word travel through i mean is it immediately over radio or guys talking i heard immediately i mean he went down and i didn't see it, it was him he was he was actually in front of me just over to the left he went down i passed i passed the crash right after i passed the crash i was hearing in my radio that he went down so you hear normally with something like vinogroff or a big favorite or a big sprinter even a big sprinter just coming out on the back of the climb, as soon as we go up one of the climbs, when you hear big sprinters going out the back, you hear that quite quickly too. And so that information's relayed really fast. I gotta believe CSC heard it directly right away. But again, there was no change in pace. Sure. No one, no one picked it up. I absolutely 100% guarantee we could have been going faster if the favorites were getting on the front trying to gain time on Vino. We asked you yesterday if there's a, a patron of the peloton, and you said not doesn't exist this year. So in that in a situation like that. Who makes the call? I mean, does everybody look to the GC riders to see what do we do? I mean, without one guy dictating? No, without one, without one guy dictating, you're just going to keep going. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. Maybe, maybe in the Lance era they would have slowed down. Maybe, but I don't think so because you would have lost the yellow jersey. You're asking, yeah. you, would have, you would have expected CSC to give up the yellow jersey and someone to give up a shot at winning the stage. So I don't even know if that would happen with Lance. Maybe it would have, but I don't think so, for, because there's five teams on the front. Who is he going to get upset on and, and you know cause some revenge on? There's, there's no one to blame. It was just bike racing. If anything was to blame, then he should have had his team around him quicker 
and he should have been out more to the side. If it would have been Lance Armstrong, I'm certain you would have seen him out to the side more in the wind with his whole team making sure something like that didn't happen. And that's the difference is Lance Armstrong was the boss, and not only was he the boss, but he was so much better than everyone that he could just put his team out to the right and avoid a crash like that. And that's how Armstrong is managed to miss you know crashes like that for seven years i mean that's a seven years without crashing in a tour de france alone is an unbelievable feat level yet winning seven times but seven times without a major crash at a moment like that is just something that you you know you you don't see i mean it's it's, it's so rare yeah, that's really good insight well hey uh, we got a really huge response on the reader emails um that we started yesterday. We heard from Marty in Australia, and he wanted. He wrote back and said, "Thanks for taking your question. I got a question today uh, from a guy named Dennis ja Jakuk. He didn't list his city or state, but this was kind of a funny question. I thought you could help answer. He says, "Chris, I have the same quote-unquote hairstyle as you. How do you avoid getting a striped tan on the top of your head? I wear a bandana under my helmet, but I wouldn't want to do that racing the Tour de France. By the way, I totally enjoy your diaries. Great info and great attitude." Okay, well, actually, Dennis, it, this is a funny thing because yesterday I was riding to the start line and I oh, no, forgot the sunblock. Gonna end up with the stripes. I already have the stripes coming, but by the end of the tour, there's no way around it. You're gonna have some stripes. Kind of not a good idea, but it doesn't take long during training. The stripes will go away if you train without a helmet. <laughs> so it's all about sunblock. <laughs> which, which, you know, of course, I'm not you know, telling anyone to train without a helmet or anything. <laughs> but anyways, uh, sunblock on, train without a helmet, stripes are gone. You're going to wear a helmet, you're going to have stripes. Simple as that. Yeah, cool. Well, if you have any more questions for Chris, write them in and to VeloNewsTV at InsideInc.com. Remember the TV? We had a, a woman that we work with got flooded with emails of people just sending them to VeloNews at Inside Inc. Dot com. But uh, Chris, always a pleasure. Thanks for the time, and uh, we'll catch up with you soon. Thanks for your time, and thanks for the emails.